Hello and welcome students to another episode of History at Home. In today's episode, we will examine hunter-gatherer societies and a major turning point in human history, the Neolithic Revolution. Let's begin by discussing the first humans on Earth. Our fossil records show that humans evolved at least 195,000 years ago, and we have archaeology that proves this. Archaeologist Richard Leakey discovered the fossilized remains of Oma 1, the oldest human ever discovered. And here are the fossilized remains that Richard Leakey discovered of Oma 1. And Richard Leakey excavated these fossilized remains in 1967 CE. We also know that humans first evolved in Africa. And we know this because archaeologists consistently find the oldest human remains in this continent. And the oldest human remains, again, that's Oma 1, were discovered within the lower Omo Valley in the modern day country of Ethiopia. And here is the continent of Africa. And within this red dot here is the country of Ethiopia. And if we zoom in further on Ethiopia, we see the lower Omo Valley here. This is where Richard Leakey discovered Oma 1. And again, Oma 1 is the oldest human on fossil record. Lastly, although the archaeology says that humans are 195,000 years old, humans are undoubtedly even older than that. Our mitochondrial DNA suggests humans are at least 338,000 years old. However, right now, we do not have the archaeology that supports this number, but maybe a discovery in the future will be made that verifies this number. Now, so far, we have exclusively talked about humans in Africa, but obviously humans are everywhere today. And this is because our ancestors migrated throughout the globe. And this migration is known as the out of Africa theory. The out of Africa theory states two things. First, it states that humans originated in Africa. And it also states that humans simply walked to the other six continents of Earth. So let's take a closer look at the out of Africa theory and diagram what this migration looked like. So the first humans originated in Africa 195,000 years ago. And slowly over the years, as the human population started to grow, humans began to move throughout Africa. And what is driving this need to move is population pressure. The planet is experiencing a slow population growth during this time. And as more people join the planet, the amount of available resources like food and territory become increasingly scarce. This forces people to move. And it's not even really like a choice for them because if they don't move, they will not survive. So people start to move south, they start to move west, and some head up the banks of the Nile River, cross over the Sinai Peninsula, and leave Africa altogether. Now, a small group of humans begin entering an entirely new continent, and that continent is Asia. This happens around 100,000 years ago, and the population pressure continues to force people to move. And eventually, we reach Australia by boat around 50,000 years ago, and we begin to reach Europe about 40,000 years ago. But when humans first begin reaching Europe, the Earth is experiencing an Ice Age. Now, the Ice Age is a period in time in which the Northern Hemisphere became incredibly cold. In space, our planet naturally revolves around the sun, but our planet revolves with a tilt of about 23 and a half degrees. The ice age occurred because Earth's tilt was a little bit more extreme than 23 and a half degrees. It was actually closer to 24 and a half degrees. And this put the Northern Hemisphere further away from the sun. And since the Northern Hemisphere is now further away from the sun, it received less solar radiation. And in Northern Hemisphere, it became much, much colder and covered in huge glaciers and ice sheets. And during the Ice Age, a small group of humans began to walk across these glaciers and ice sheets from Asia, across the Bering Sea, and into the Americas about 14,000 years ago. Now, these ice sheets have since disappeared, and Asia and North America are no longer connected. But 14,000 years ago, they were, and this is how humans ended up in the Western Hemisphere. From there, humans walked south and eventually reached into Mesoamerica, and eventually got even further south into South America. And humans entered South America around 12,000 years ago. 
And this is what the out of Africa theory explains. Number one, it explains that humans originated in Africa. And number two, humans got to the other six continents simply by walking. Now, let's talk about hunter-gatherer societies and how they functioned and how they were organized. Hunter-gatherer societies were the first societies on this planet. And they are called hunter-gatherers because this is how they secured their food. They either hunted prey or gathered edible plant life. And because their food moved, whether it was animals migrating and seasons changing, hunter-gatherer societies tended to be nomadic. So this is one of the limitations of hunting-gathering societies. They need to live a nomadic lifestyle. They are constantly on the move because they need to follow food and they lack a permanent home because of this. This movement also limited their technology. They could not advance dramatically in regards to technology because they never developed writing and writing is a direct response to an ability hunter-gatherers never had which was agriculture. They did have technology such as the spear, bow and arrow, obsidian knives, fire, stone axes, and musical instruments, but that is about the height of hunter-gatherer technology. They never develop much sophisticated or advanced technologies because they don't invent something as basic as writing. And basic writing actually is a result of agricultural societies. Finally, Food is scarce, and this means hunter-gatherer populations and global populations stay relatively low. Hunter-gatherer tribes tend to reach a ceiling of about 30 people, and this is because it's just too hard to feed more people than that with a hunting-gathering lifestyle. And also, our global population around 10,000 BCE is around 1 million people. Hunter-gatherer societies also had a clear division of labor and tended to be egalitarian. Both men and women had specific jobs, with men being the hunters and tool makers, and women taking on a variety of jobs like gathering food, making clothing, creating fires, and raising the tribe's kids. And since all jobs within the group were of the utmost importance for survival, society was egalitarian. All members of the society were valued equally. The hunters in the hunting-gathering societies they mostly hunted by fishing. And they fished for their food, and this was the preferred way of hunting to secure food because it doesn't take or use a large amount of effort or energy, and it was much safer than conducting the other mode of hunting, which was persistence hunting. Persistence hunting is a very exhaustive and long-winded way of outlasting your prey. And the goal of persistence hunting was simply just to outlast your prey and then to move in for the kill when the animal is too exhausted to move. And humans are able to do this because we have several key advantages over other animals. We are bipedal, meaning we walk on two legs, we can carry stuff with our open hands, and because our sweat cools our bodies more efficiently than other alternatives like panting. And this helps us prevent from overheating. We also have superior stamina than any other animal that has ever lived. And these abilities and these advantages allow us to conduct these persistence hunts. Finally, our constant pursuit for food led us to one of the most important discoveries in human history, a discovery that totally changed human existence. And this discovery is known as the Neolithic Revolution. The Neolithic Revolution is when humans discovered agriculture. Now, we don't know the name of the person who discovered agriculture, but we can take an educated guess on a few items. We believe agriculture was discovered by a woman in southern Iraq around 10,000 BCE. And this discovery is where historians draw a line between the Paleolithic Age and the Neolithic Age. This discovery will totally revolutionize the way humans live, and we can see this by comparing the life of humans during the Paleolithic Age with the life of humans during the Neolithic Age. So during the Paleolithic Age, this is a time period that lasts from 2.6 million years ago until about 10,000 BCE, whereas the Neolithic Age goes from 10,000 BCE, again, that's the discovery of agriculture, until about 4,500 BCE. And during the Paleolithic Age, the only way humans got food was by hunting and gathering, and this also means that they were nomadic and consistently, exclusively nomadic during this time period. However, during the Neolithic Age, again, after the discovery of agriculture, 
people start to establish permanent residencies and they begin to form cities. And this is a result of knowing exactly where the food will be. And we know exactly where the food will be because of agriculture. Also, Paleolithic people had very simple technologies. They are limited to technologies like the bow and arrow, spears and obsidian knives. But once we discover agriculture and we leap into the Neolithic age, we start to see technology improve and humans begin to experiment with metals like copper. Lastly, the Neolithic revolution brought on some great changes to the human existence, but these changes were a mixed bag. Not only were they good, but they were also bad. And this new way of life, this agricultural lifestyle, created many benefits and many setbacks. First, one major benefit we gain from agriculture is that we can control how much food we grow, which allows us to grow a surplus. This means humans can grow more food than they can possibly eat at one time, and we can store food and save food for emergencies. However, since we are now getting food from planting seeds in the grounds, we also become vulnerable to changes in our environment. Changes such as droughts, floods, and an early frost will directly impact the amount of food we grow, and we are now at risk of falling into famine. However, we do get another pro from agriculture. Another pro of agriculture is that our global population begins to grow. With more food, we can start feeding more people. But the downside to this is that we begin to live amongst more people and more animals, so disease becomes a larger risk. We also start to live in one permanent location, and cities begin to form, which is good, and the first major cities on Earth begin to form in modern-day Iraq. And this image here is a reconstruction of arguably the world's first major city, which is Iruk again in modern day Iraq. Here's what it looks like today. And this ruin here is a public building known as the Ziggurat, and that is what's pictured here. And the Ziggurat was a multi-purpose building. It stored uh, Uruk's surplus grain. It was also a temple to various gods and goddesses, and it was also the headquarters of the government of Uruk. However, living in a permanent location also had a negative side effect on our health. Our health suffers because we live and are staying in one location more often and not moving as much. We also begin to eat less healthy foods because agricultural foods are less healthy on average than hunting gathering foods. Early agriculturalists are also shorter than their hunter gatherer ancestors and we have way higher rates for other issues such as cavities, obesity, and heart disease. This again is because we are less active now and have a poorer diet than hunter-gatherers. Lastly, with agriculture, we get new jobs and we begin to see an advance in technology. Since we are now able to produce a surplus of food, people will begin adopting professions to work and these professions will advance our technology. But with professions comes inequality. Some jobs are seen as being more skilled and valuable to a society and social classes begin to form. If your job required a high degree of skill and is valuable to the society, your job became um, even more important than others. You also became now a member of what we call the upper class. If your job is in manual labor and unskilled, you begin to plummet into the lower classes. Egalitarianism is non-existent in agricultural societies and social inequality is a major problem even in modern societies today. All right, that's all I have for you for now. Thanks for watching.